In this tutorial, we'll take a look at how you can view and manage projects assigned to either you or colleagues within the platform. To begin, you must be within the projects portion of the application. As you can see, if we look in the upper right hand corner of my screen, you can see it says projects. If you happen to be in a different area of the platform, just click the menu and choose projects from the list. The first page that you see when accessing projects is the project dashboard. The project dashboard provides you an overview of all the projects currently assigned to you. Now, the system is permission based, so for example, if you're a manager and you have four or five reps that are assigned to you, you would then have permission to review their projects as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the functions that are on the dashboard. As you can see up at the top, there are some filters. So as I mentioned, uh, if you do have permission, you're able to switch the user filter so you can look at other users projects that are assigned to them. Again, if you're a manager and you'd like to see one of your reps projects, um, you have the ability to do that. You would just simply choose their name from the list here. Below that are two visual graphs. Uh, this lets you know the first graph is how many project tasks are past due. Um, so these are tasks within the project or actions within the project that are currently past their due date. Uh, and on the right hand side, if we just scroll a little bit to the right, um, this is a graph that lets you know how many projects are currently new, how many uh, projects are currently active, on hold, or inactive. So the visual graph above is represented by the statistics below. Now to access your actual project list, you want to choose the list option on the left hand side of the page. This will load your project list and up at the top of the page there are some filters you could use to narrow your results. Just to quickly cover them, you can filter or search by user, by the type of template the project is. So for example, if it's an email that's assigned to you, uh, you can filter it by the email project templates. An ID number, if you know your customer's ID, you can enter it here, or by project status, if it's active or inactive or canceled. If you make any changes to the filters up here, um, you just want to click the search button to go ahead and process those changes and then your results will appear down below. Now the actual project list is below um, and as you can see there are two current projects here. The first column here is the name of the project so you can see that this is a, an email for Acme Communications. This is the particular partner it's for or customer it's for. And then the, la the one below it is the vendor led email for ABC Group. Let's just go left to right on these columns here. Um, so this gives you a quick overview of where the project currently is. Um, you'll see here there's a completed column. This is just a bar with a visual graph letting you know how far that particular project is completed. So if we go ahead and look at this first one, we can see that it's 25% complete. Um, this is the customer that it's for. So not only is the customer name inside the project name, it's also uh, here under the contact tab. Um, the template type, so you can see these are both vendor-led emails. Um, which task you're currently on, as you can see the first one here, I'm in step two, um, where the one below it is, I'm still in the, the planning process. Uh, this tells you when the actual project was created. Um, and then there's some activity stamps here on the right, last activity, um, last contact activity, and then who it's currently assigned to. If the project is past due, meaning you're missing all the dates that are set, uh, to meet certain actions, uh, there will be a pink highlight behind the actual uh, project. So there will be a pink background here. Um, so that's how you can determine which particular project is running late. Now let's go ahead and actually go to manage a specific project. Um, so I'll choose the second one here, the vendor-led email for ABC Group. And this will bring us to our project information page. The project information page just uh, shows you the name of the project up at the top, who the current project manager is, same information that we kind of saw on the previous page. It allows you to modify it, so if you would like to change the name of the project, you can do that. If you need to change the due date, you can do that as well. Uh, and then down below, um, you can add notes for this project. So for example, if you reached out to someone to maybe try to get their logo, or you want to talk to them about the email that needs to be built, um, you can enter notes and send emails directly out of the system from here. And then any of these notes that you add to this particular project, um, they all get added here under history and notes. So you can actually use this as a uh, CRM application and, and document all the correspondences that you've had with this particular client. Now let's go ahead and get to the actual steps that need to be taken to complete this particular project. So what we will do is we'll click this Milestones tab.
when you click on milestones it will then list all the actions and milestones that need to be completed in order to complete this project. Projects in the platform are broken up into two components. They are milestones and actions and we'll talk briefly about each one. So a milestone is a major objective. A milestone consists of a group of actions that make up a major objective of the project. So for example if we look at the project below you can see there's a an option here in gray and it says to set up. So this is the setup milestone and all these items below it are the actions that make up this entire milestone. So in order to complete the setup milestone every single action here one through five need to be completed. So milestones are a group of actions uh, that need to be completed in order to complete that milestone and then the action is the individual item that needs to be completed so for example it's the task that needs to be done uh, so if we look here the very first one on this entire project is to identify the team that's going to be working on this project uh, and if we look at the second milestone the setup you can see that the actual action here is email to partner requesting the needed data now actions can be as simple as identifying people that are on the team uh, it can be an email that you send out, it can be a form that needs to be filled out, so it can be you know, a host of different items, or it could be just as simple as saying, hey, I, I marked this item as completed, I've done it. Now those particular milestones and actions, they're actually set up in the project template, and when you're managing the project, the project templates are obviously already created for you, so that's not something that you need to worry about. Now let's go ahead and get to the nitty gritty here and actually start managing this particular project. Again, we've just covered what milestones are, we've covered what actions are, so let's go ahead and start showing you how the project can be completed. So the first step on almost every single project will be to identify who is working on the project. Uh, and this is what we call a select roles action. Uh, and this is where you go ahead and choose the particular users that are working on the project. Now there is the option in the template where this may be assigned automatically. Uh, but in this example, I need to choose them manually. So what I'll do is I'll go over on the right hand side and I'll choose the select people option. So now this brings us over to the contacts and users screen and it's telling me here that uh, there are two roles that need to be identified, who the marketing manager is and who the decision maker is. The decision maker in most situations is the customer that you're working with. So in this case, my decision maker will be ABC Group. Um, so I'll just select the role and I'll choose the decision maker from my list. And you can see decision maker has been identified. If we look down, you can see um, there's a user. I'm the user. I'm actually using the system. And I'm going to be the actual marketing manager. So I'll just put a check in the box next to the marketing manager role. And I click Save. And now both roles have been identified. So if we go ahead and go back to our milestone section, it should now have completed that particular step. And as you can see, the marketing manager has been selected. And the partner decision maker has been selected. It tells us when it was done. And now we can actually move on to the next set of actions which is the setup milestone. So the next step of this particular project is to email the partner requesting the needed data and this particular action is a email. So you can see it's assigned to me which is MR, this is a start date uh, and to actually send the email I can click the edit and send email button and this will load our content editor um, you can put the person's email address here. If they have one, it will automatically be defaulted for you. You can see that the subject line is already set up for me and the actual email set up for me as well. All I need to do is go through this email and any placeholders that I have that need to be updated, I can go ahead and do that. So you can have a blank canvas and do whatever you like within this editor. You can create a template and reuse it. Um, and that's all set up in the actual project template as well. Um, more times than none, you'll just have to go through like I am now uh, and just fill in any placeholder information. When that's done, you click send email. And what that will do is it will complete that step automatically for you. That email has been sent uh, and you can move on to the next action. So as you can see, managing projects is actually a pretty simple process. It's just going through the steps from the first step and the first milestone down. Um, the next thing that we would technically do here, and again, uh, there's going to be some delay here, right? You're, I'm reaching out to the, this particular person for their information. At some point, I'm going to get that information. So it's not all going to happen at the same time. We're doing this for training purposes. 
when that partner does get back to me and gives me that logo and their information, I can go ahead to this next step here and I can mark it as completed, um, basically stating, yes, they sent me their logo, they sent me their information, this particular action is done. Next step is for the partner to choose the specific campaigns that they would like. Again, I would reach out to the partner, they would choose the specific campaigns they would like, and then when that's done, I can mark it as completed. The next two steps are the same. They are what we call uh, action items here. So again, I would reach out, I would get the mailing list. Once I get the mailing list, I can complete that step. When they've approved the campaign, again, I would mark that one as completed as well. And then if I just want to refresh this page for you so we can see, you know, all these items have been completed. There's check marks there that uh, next to them now. You actually have the option to undo a step if it's been completed. So for example, if you've marked something completed accidentally, or maybe they decided they don't want the campaign anymore, you can actually undo the item. All right, so that makes the second milestone done. Um, now we can go to the actual third milestone, which is the actual execution. And this is for me to actually launch this particular email for this particular customer. Once it's been launched, I can go ahead and say, you know, this has been completed same process here um, that will mark this step as completed and then the actual last step here is to gather the results and actually fill out a form uh, with those results so if we go ahead and click fill out form a form will display and then I need to capture this data so we can say you know there was a thousand sent out of those thousand the report shows 250 opened it and then 43 clicks uh, we had no calls, but we had, let's just say, 10 form submissions. I click Submit. That data has been captured. It processed the request. And then at that point, this particular project has been completed. So this is how a project is managed start to finish. Again, as I mentioned previously in the video, project will not be completed this quick um, just because there's some back and forth that will happen between you and your customer or you and the project in general. From here, we can return back to our project list by clicking return the project list button. And as you can see, that project is no longer here on the dashboard. Now, one thing that I would like to point out is we do have some help functions within the system. You can see there's a need help option here at the bottom. Um, this is a step-by-step -step tutorial. And here it'll actually tell you, you know, here's how you can manage projects, here how you can create a project template. If you click on managing projects, it will actually um, pop up tutorial on the screen and say, you know, use these search filters. Um, and it tells you it goes through each step here. And this will actually take you through the actual process, just like I did in this video. Make sure you go ahead and use that help option in the bottom right corner. Um, there's a search box there as well uh, and articles that you can read. Uh, it is a good tool uh, and again the pop-ups will actually take you through the entire process start to finish. All right and that's it on managing projects. Uh, as always any questions, suggestions, or if you need help on anything you can reach out to us at service at structuredweb.com. I hope the video was helpful uh, and have a good day.